Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the Gaumon PD1610 pen display, which is a monitor that you can draw on, which is to say that you will have to connect this to your computer in order to use it. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit provided by the company. In this video, I'm just going to present to you my findings so that you can decide whether or not this is worth the money. And the official retail price for this is US $539. This pen display is also available on Amazon and at the time of making this video it's 431 US dollars on Amazon USA so that's like 20% off. The company also sells another 16 inch pen display at the higher end and that's the PD1621. So this uses a 4K laminated touch screen display versus the PD1610 which has a 16 by 10 2.5K resolution non-touch screen display. And the price for this is US $999. All right, let me give you the bottom line up front. This is a good looking pen display with good drawing performance. The main selling point of this pen display to me is the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is quite uncommon but more useful compared to 16 by 9 displays because this gives you 11% more drawing surface area. Other features such as USB-C support, the matte textured laminated glass, and the 2.5K resolution are just toppings on the cake. My overall drawing experience on this pen display is very positive. There are minor issues which I will talk about later, but none of them affect drawing performance. The main issue is if you are a Mac OS user, this combination of 16 inch and 2.5K resolution is not a good combo for Mac OS. Because if you use this display at native resolution, the UI elements like the icons, the text will be quite small. If you scale up the UI elements, the visuals will look fuzzy. Fuzzy as in if you apply a matte screen protector over a clear display, you will see additional green and fuzziness. That's the fuzziness you will get if you are using Mac OS with this display and you scale up the UI elements. Windows users don't have to worry about UI scaling issues because the visuals will remain sharp regardless of the scaling you use. These are the items included in the box. There is a power adapter. This is a USB-A port. So these are interchangeable plugs for the power adapter. A microfiber cleaning cloth, quick start guide, one artist glove, USB-C to USB-C video cable, mini HDMI to full-size HDMI video cable, a two-in-one data and power cable. This end here is USB-C. This will go to the pen display, this USB-A will go to the computer, and this red USB will go to the power if needed. And there is a stand included. The model number of the included stand is GMS02. And this design looks quite striking with the high contrast black and white. The overall build quality is very solid, and this is matte textured. There are several pieces of rubber padding at all the important places. This stand has three angles for deployment. This is the highest angle, which is actually not that high. It's less than 45 degrees. And this is the middle angle, which is lower. And this one here is the lowest Angle. This stand allows you to work with the pen display at comfortable angles, but the downside is you cannot prop up the pen display vertically or anywhere near vertically. So if you want to watch shows for long periods of time, watching shows at this angle is not ideal. The included pen is the Gaumon AP51. This pen supports tilt and slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. There are two side buttons and this rubber grip is quite comfortable to hold, but as you can see, it can attract dust quite easily. The pen tip has minimal to no movement. This pen is not powered by battery, so no charging is required. This is the pen stand. You can have the pen placed vertically or horizontally. 
and when you open this you will find eight replacement pen nibs inside including the nib remover if you look at Gaumont's online store you will see several items listed under extra accessories so these are extras many of these items are already included because if you scroll down to the bottom of the page you can see the packing list but if you want extras you can add them to your purchase so this is the Gaumont PD1610 pen display it's actually slightly larger than I expected thanks to the 16 by 10 aspect ratio and this is how big it is compared to my laptop which is also 16 by 10 so you can see the pen display is noticeably wider the build quality is fantastic on the front we have matte textured glass and on the back we have aluminum alloy and this is also matte textured that's the very shiny Gaumont logo the finishing is quite nice we have curved sides rounded corners this is quite thin this is 11.5 millimeter and even though this may look like a giant tablet this is not a tablet this is a monitor that you can draw on so because this is a monitor you will have to connect this to a computer in order to use it so on the front we have thicker bezels on the sides thinner ones at the top and bottom we have eight hotkeys which are touch sensitive the ports are located on the right side there's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack two USB-C video ports these are interchangeable and a mini HDMI and here at the top is the power button there are textured lines that are on the side that goes around the pen display I've just connected the pen display to this laptop that's running Windows 11 this pen display can also be used with Mac OS and Android devices that can output video signal. So I am using USB-C to USB-C connection for video power and data and this laptop is able to power the pen display at maximum brightness which is 180 nits. 180 nits of brightness is still good enough for indoor use for example right now I'm in a room with a huge window on the left and this brightness looks sufficient to me the advertised brightness is 220 nits so for this setup with a laptop I have to connect the laptop to external power otherwise the pen display will drain the battery life quite quickly if for some reason your computer cannot power the pen display because the USB port cannot provide enough power for the pen display you will have to connect the pen display to additional power with the included USB cable so this one here the USB-C end will go to the pen display and this red one will go to the USB power adapter if you are using HDMI video connection you will have to use the HDMI cable together with this cable so that's um, two cables obviously I prefer the one single cable solution the USB-C to USB-C video connection there is one power management issue that affects Mac users if you use a USB-C to USB-C connection with your Mac to the pen display and you restart your Mac the pen display will not be able to remember its brightness and it will go back to the default brightness which is 10% which is very dim so each time you start your Mac or restart your Mac you have to adjust the brightness and that is a deal breaker to prevent that from happening you have to connect another power source to the pen display so you will have to use two cables with Mac OS Windows users can use USB-C video connection without any issues so if you start or restart your Windows computer the pen display will be able to remember its brightness but if you disconnect and connect the cable the brightness will be lost again so now it's quite dim and you have to go in to the OSD to adjust the brightness that's if you disconnect and connect the cable the design of this pen display looks clean and simple there is this little triangle here where the letter A is that's backlit by light the hotkeys are also backlit now these are touch sensitive buttons so it is possible to activate them accidentally when you have your finger here or when your palm is resting around this area so if you don't want to activate the buttons accidentally you can turn them off with the driver 
The colors on this pen display look good out of the box. I've already color calibrated this and I measure color support for 100% sRGB, 86% Adobe RGB, 90% P3 and 81% NTSC. So this pen display has reasonably good color accuracy. This pen display uses matte textured glass, so this is not going to scratch like matte screen protectors. The display is laminated, so there is no gap between the glass and the LCD beneath. So when you are drawing, it really looks like the line is coming out from directly beneath the pen tip. The lamination of this display is done really well. The pixels really look like they are on top of the glass and cursor tracking is very accurate right up to the extreme edge here so i don't see any misalignment this surface may be matte textured but this is still considered semi-glossy the reflections are diffused yes but they are not diffused all the way i can still see the sharp reflections the anti-glare isn't too aggressive if I tilt the display this way, you can see the diffused reflections affecting the contrast and hence the image quality. But when you're looking straight, it looks fine, it looks alright. Viewing angles are good. There is minimal color shift when viewing the display from extreme angles. It's just that there is the drop in brightness. So you will get the best image quality when you look at the display straight on. One of the main selling points of this pen display to me is the 16 by 10 aspect ratio which gives you 11% more surface area to work with compared to a display that is 16 by 9. Let's look at the difference between 16 by 10 versus 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This laptop that I have here is actually 16 inches and is also 16 by 10 but I've went into the settings to change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 so now there are black bars at the top and bottom. So if you look at the pen display on the left side you can see two and a half rows of thumbnails. If I move this app over to the laptop which is 16 by 9 here I can only see two rows of thumbnails versus two and a half rows of thumbnails earlier. So with the extra vertical pixels, you get to see more content, which directly improves productivity. If you're using drawing apps, you will be able to see more content on your palette. So for example, with this app, I can see five brushes here and four layers here. When I move the app over to 16 by 9, I can see four instead of five brushes here and three instead of four layers here. So I've just switched the laptop back to 16 by 10 aspect ratio and now I can see five brushes here and four layers here and you can also see the surface area has increased. Next thing I want to show you is 1080p resolution or in this case 1920 by 1200 versus 2.5K resolution. Shown on the left is the 2.5K resolution where pixelation isn't that noticeable unless you are looking really close at the display. And shown on the right side is the 1080p plus resolution where pixelation is noticeable. Visuals on this display look sharp. The text, the icons, they all look very sharp. And because this surface is not too rough, it doesn't introduce too much green and color noise. So the image quality that you can get with this display is actually slightly better compared to pen displays that have a more textured surface. How smooth the drawing surface is, is always a compromise. The smoother the surface, the better the image quality. The more textured the surface is, the more tactile experience you will get, but at the expense of having more green and color noise added. This Gaumon pen display makes a good compromise with the image quality and the textured drawing surface. By the way, if this sketch looks familiar, it's because I actually drew this on the Samsung Tab S6 Lite. I'm just doing some touch up here with the pen display. To show the OSD manual, you can press and hold the power button for a few seconds and this will appear. 
you can adjust these settings with the pen which is quite convenient so you can adjust the brightness and contrast you can make this black and white I'm not sure what this mode is it makes the display too dark so I'm using user HDR is um, it's fake HDR so let me just go back to user mode here you can adjust the color temperature and here you can choose the input source either HDMI or USB type C the OSD will remember its settings when you power off the display using the power button or when you shut down and restart your computer but if you plug out the cable like this without powering off the next time you start the pen display it's going to be dim the settings will not be remembered so try to power off the pen display properly with the power button or with your computer instead of just pulling out the plug and now let's see what you can do with the driver so i've tested the mac os and windows driver from august 15 2022 and both drivers have rather similar functionality so this is the windows driver and this is where you can customize the pen the side buttons and the pressure curve for the windows driver you get two control points to adjust the pressure curve with the mac os driver you only have one control point so you will be able to get finer pressure adjustments with the windows driver there is windows ink which you may have to toggle on or off if pressure is not working as expected so this is where you can customize the two side buttons on the pen you can set your own keyboard shortcuts, choose a mouse key, choose switching functions such as switch display or switch brush. There are multimedia controls of show and hide driver settings or show and hide functions of the express keys. Or you can use the button to launch programs. Because I use a dual display setup, I always have one side button set to switch display. So now the cursor is on the pen display. I can switch it over to the laptop this is quite convenient and it works well one setting that's missing here is mouse mode so with pen mode the cursor will always track beneath the pen tip with mouse mode you can push the cursor around just like a mouse so if I do this action for example I can push the cursor further and further up if mouse mode is available but it's not anyway I don't use mouse mode when I have the pen so it doesn't really affect me so this is where you can customize the eight hotkeys on the side you can input your own keyboard shortcuts or choose from the predefined shortcuts or if you don't want to use these hotkeys you can turn them off here and this is where you can calibrate the display if for some reason you find that there is cursor misalignment for this review unit that I have I don't see any cursor misalignment so the cursor is always directly beneath the pen tip which is nice and when you tilt the pen at a very low angle the cursor doesn't stray away much from the pen tip so that is nice if you are a left-handed user you can click here to change the orientation 180 degrees so that the hotkeys are on the right hand side Another thing you can do with the driver is you can create shortcut groups so you can actually create groups of shortcuts for specific apps that you use for example here I can create shortcuts for Affinity Photo and when I launch Affinity Photo those shortcuts will launch automatically I can create shortcuts for Medibank as well so if I switch to Medibank again the shortcuts for Medibank will load automatically and now for the line test the app that I'm using is Medibank Paint Pro I like to use this app for my line test because this app does not provide any software correction to the lines so the line quality that you see here is the line quality you can expect from the pen and I can see slight jitter with the slow diagonal lines so these lines were drawn at 100% magnification and now I'm drawing the same lines with 200% magnification 200% zoom 
For some reason, when you zoom in, you can always draw straighter lines. So now the jitter is not as obvious, even though I'm using the same brush with the same thickness. Let's look at how the strokes taper. They taper really nicely. The taper is smooth and sharp. Let's look at the transition from thin to thick and back to thin. The transition is quite smooth, so this means you can draw thick and thin lines even if you have a very thick brush selected. Let's see if I can maintain consistent line width by maintaining consistent pressure. This is quite good. Let's look at the dots. So you can draw dots very easily by tapping the pen on the display. Let's test for latency. This display has a refresh rate of 60 Hz and there is the usual amount of latency as the line is trying to catch up with the pen tip. This is to be expected, so I'm not surprised here. Next, let's test for image retention or ghosting effect. So I'm going to move the image around to see if there is any image retention. I can see slight image retention or ghosting effect, but it's not something I would notice when I'm moving things around unless I'm specifically looking for it. In other words, the ghosting effect or image retention is not something that stands out. Let's look at tilt sensitivity. The cursor is able to follow the direction of the pen. I'm using a rig brush in Photoshop, so let's draw some broad vertical strokes. This is too big. Broad horizontal strokes and thin vertical strokes, thin horizontal strokes. And let me draw a circle as best as I can. So tilt works fine. It is possible to vary the thickness of the line by using tilt instead of pressure. So these are thin lines drawn with minimal pressure. When I press down hard, the lines are still thin, but they are darker now. So now I'm varying the tilt to get the broader strokes. Tilt and pressure can be used together at the same time. The jitter that you see here are from my hand shaking. Let's talk about the drawing experience. So this 16 inch display is big. This is larger than A4 size paper. So this is a very comfortable size to work with. This will let you draw very freely compared to drawing on a smaller display where your movement will have to be smaller. This matte textured drawing surface is on the smoother side, but it's still matte textured. So it does provide some tactile drawing experience and the pen glides rather smoothly on it. It's not slippery, it's just smooth, which is nice. I was able to get the lines to come out just the way I expect them to. So if I press down hard, I can get thicker lines. If I use minimal pressure, I can get thin lines. I can have the lines taper from thin to thick, depending on pressure. So performance is very predictable, very consistent. I did not experience any glitches with the drawing apps that I have tested, namely Photoshop, Medibank Paint Pro, Affinity Photo, and Clip Studio Paint. Adobe Photoshop uh, lags though, as in the latency is very noticeable. But with Affinity Photo, Clip Studio, and Medibank Paint Pro, um, the responsiveness is very good. Overall drawing performance, as mentioned, is predictable and consistent. There are no surprises, which is good. So the workflow is, uh, to me, very smooth. So this pen display is quite enjoyable to work on. Let's add some clear strokes to the hair here. So thin to thick to thin. Let me touch up this part here. So this is the drawing performance you can expect with other apps as well. Let me use the eraser to erase this part. 
The hotkeys by the side, they do work well, but I prefer to use my keyboard shortcuts instead. I mean my own keyboard instead. Let me create a new layer here and write the name of the product. So this display is really a good size to work with as mentioned earlier. You can have palettes on the left and right side and still get a good amount of area to draw with. This pen display is not a touch screen so it's not going to support finger gestures so you will not be able to rotate, zoom or pen with your fingers. For me that's not a big issue, I don't miss touch sensitivity because I've been using my keyboard for navigation for years which feels uh, very natural to me. So this is actually quite a straightforward product for me to review because I did not experience any issues so I did not have to do any troubleshooting. I did not have to waste time to troubleshoot. Here's another sketch. This one was drawn with Affinity Photo 2. These were actually just drawn with reference photos. I did not have any issues with this app as well. Pressure works fine. Tilt works fine. So this pen display is good for line art and can be used for digital painting as well. To conclude, my overall drawing experience is very positive. So even though earlier you may see slight jitter with the diagonal lines, but I didn't really see any jitter when I was drawing. The drawing workflow and process is very smooth. I did not experience any surprises. I guess um, the main downside for this pen display is I wish the included stand can prop up the display even higher. And for Mac users, 16 inch with 1440p or in this case 2560 by 1600 is not a good combination. So Mac users do take note of that. But otherwise for Windows users and for digital artists who have the budget for something that is good, this is a good pen display to consider and I really appreciate the extra vertical pixel. That to me is a huge selling point. All right, if you guys are interested to get this pen display, you can check out the purchase links that I have for you in the video description below. And if you have any other questions regarding this pen display, let me know in the comment section below. I hope this review is useful. See you guys again. Bye.